Okay, now scientists have created two experimental drugs that have the potential to cure the deadly Ebola hemorrhagic fever. The drugs have shown a survival rate of up to 90% in a clinical trial in the Democratic Republic of the DRC. Well, to talk more about this to us, we're joined in the studio by Jean Boissa, the DRC National's Chairman of Right to Leave. Mr. Boissa, good morning. Thank you very much good for morning, joining sir. us uh, this morning. I appreciate your time at such short notice. I, I, I mean, it's good news. I mean, overall, if you think about the efforts that have been put by different people in different parts of the world, including on the to come up with this uh, a successful experiment that brings hope to those who've been affected by this deadly virus well done I would say with you as I heard the news uh, first of all the news that we heard was the appointment of uh, dr. professor Muyembe who's a specialist in the field of Ebola for many years and decades. So bringing him on board was quite successful on its own. Is Dr. Muyembe from the DRC? From the DRC, well, that's yes. That's good. That's so good. that was already good. And he was successful in the 90s when the Ebola broke in the area of Bandundu Kikwit. But why did it take so long to bring somebody like that on board? That's the question we're asking ourselves because sometimes, you know, we don't have a government for the past eight months and sometimes uh, it's becoming a bit difficult and challenging to implement what is uh, good and what is positive for the country. Well, at least now, little sense has prevailed. They've got somebody who's a specialist in the area to come on board, and you welcome that. We really welcome that, and at the same time, we're inviting most of the African scientists because my sense is that we always import scientists from uh, uh, other continents, yet we have in the past uh, 60 years, I'm talking about independences, we have trained doctors, medical scientists, but why don't they come on board and find the cure for these diseases that are becoming quite... Uh, now, with somebody like Dr. Muyembe now leading, with, surely there should be, should be hope that, uh, you know, it's Professor Jean-Jacques Muyembe, isn't it? Yes. There should be it. hope for the people on the DRC, at least for starters. But this can be shared elsewhere where Ebola has, has, has been, like places like Sierra Leone and Liberia, don't you think? Yes, it should be shared across the continent. Remember, we're talking about uh, uniting Africa as a one continent. It should not only be for good, but it should also be for service, and it should also be for sharing science and uh, medical research, medical research kind of education, uh, and any, anything else that pertains to Africa. When you hear the statement, which I'm going to say now, I just wanted to talk now as just an ordinary citizen with your, your DRC uh, heritage, Ebola can no longer be called an incurable disease. How does that make you feel? Well, uh, I would say that I'm quite uh, cautious about that. Tell me why. I'm cautious about this because Ebola, this is the 10th or the 11th outbreak in the Congo. It started in 1976 from a river that is itself called Ebola. And uh, from 1976 to now, this is the 10th and the most deadliest uh, outbreak we've seen. Outbreak, yeah. the longest as well, as well, because it's over a year now that we have seen people dying from the disease. And my question was, why have we waited so long to bring on board Dr. Muyembe? Why have the scientists all over the world been so quiet about it? And uh, also, why has it been contained only in the eastern part of the region where we have all the mineral resources and most of the troops of the UN that are there? And it, isn't, it hasn't been crossing the borders of Uganda or Rwanda. But yet at the same time, it has killed more than 1,800 people. I, I guess in a bigger picture context, those questions are important. But if we come and hone down on the disease itself, Professor Jean-Jacques Muyembe, or Dr. Muyembe, as you refer to him, has said these latest advances in his view will help save thousands of lives. Surely that should be welcomed and that's important. I agree with you. Uh, I have known Professor Muyembe since 1990s uh, as a translator and an interpreter uh, back then in Kikwit. So, and I know he's knowledgeable in his field, and we hope that this time around, even the government, we haven't had a government for the past eight months, that they could appoint such a specialist as the Minister of Health so that he would be going through 
epidemiology, uh, immunology, and all the aspect of health. We don't have a center per se, because again, I'm cautious because when we talk about the center of health in the Congo, there aren't many hospitals in that area. And it's also another trouble that we might have. We have pockets of wars that side of violence in that area with the, uh, the Mai Mai that they call rebel, but I don't call them rebel because they're defending their land. Okay, so while we welcome this development in terms of dealing with Ebola, there's caution because of the bigger political context, lack of resources, but let's hope that the appointment of Professor Jean-Jacques Buyembe will assist in making sure that thousands of lives are indeed saved and that Ebola is curable. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure, Dan. I hope you will become a minister. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Jean Bassa, the DRC National, okay, talking to us about this new uh, vaccine. He's chairman of uh, Right to Live, making some valid points that while it should be welcomed there are still many challenges in the DRC. Let's take a look